Ragnar Lothbrok lies dead in the Northumbrian dirt. Veins choked with Anglo-Saxon wrath and Viper's venom. Revenge was swift. His sons laid waste to the British Isles, splintering the land and slaughtering all who opposed them. The Viking horde swept west, an insatiable force that brought Alfred the Great to his knees. But some men can only be pushed so far. The year is now 878 AD. Whilst Norsemen settle land they once pillaged, Alfred of Wessex seeks to unite the Isles under one banner. But here stand a new wave of the ambitious and hungry, ready to stake their claim to Britannia. Kings will rise, one will rule. Greetings, my valiant subscribers. Today I thought we should have a look at Thrones of Britannia. I haven't actually played this. I had a brief look at it and then I thought to have a brief look at it again, but also showing you all uh, the game so you can decide if it's um, glorious enough to investigate further. And I will say one thing, and that is... I always get the comment, always get the question in regards to should you play games, should you be gaming and uh, it all depends if you can successfully incorporate it in an otherwise productive schedule. I have always managed this quite well, I've always managed to utilize gaming and epic games as motivation to do other things, so when Attila came out few years back I remember the motivation kick I got from that was uh, unreal uh, both in terms of training and the holy work and YouTube videos and uh, just everything it was um, a truly a truly great sensation so if you can get that and if you can find motivation from games such as this it's uh, perfect but then again if you are skipping other things such as the gym because you want to be at home gaming then it's uh, not a good thing so uh, it all depends on if you can do it um, successfully or not um, obviously I have always been interested in British history and that's for the reason that I've read a lot of that I've read a lot of historic fiction of British history um, so let's uh, look at the uh, look at the campaign here so we have English Kingdoms, Welsh Kingdoms, Gaelic Kingdoms, Great Viking Army, and Viking Sea Kings. So we have the uh, West Saxons and the faction leader Alfred. Um, and uh, here you see we can also... I've never seen this before in a Total War game that you can um, decide the political difficulty. So... Uh, goes from easy to legendary as with the rest of the things um, and then they have some cultural features Burgal taxes are needed to support the army but whether you are at war or peace will change how the people feel and then you have Fyrd part time soldiers pledged to leave their farms for military service each year can recruit live units based on the number of owned settlements and then we have 50% plus commander's aura. Alright, that um, seems cool. I suppose we can read through this little faction information too. Because after all the charm with uh, these games are the, um, is the historic context. After decades of Viking raids, the West Saxon succession passed from brother to brother down to Alfred 
whose temperament, some say, was best suited to a life of piety and learning. However, having defeated the Vikings in battle, he now negotiated for a lasting peace. Unfortunately, the Vikings renegade and their raids have since intensified, even driving the West Saxon king from his capital for a while. Naturally, Alfred is preparing to fight back. So that's the starting position for the um, West Saxons right there. And uh, quite a cool map, so we will go into the uh, actual campaign map after we've read the other um, factions. Aha, you can choose here Mercia the as well. The men have trained for this. The men have trained for this. And they have uh, also the same cultural features. A few different uh, faction features that are special to Mercia. Um, or Mercia, perhaps you pronounce it as. Once the greatest Anglo-Saxon kingdom in Britannia, Mercia has fallen on hard times. The glory days of Offa and Penda are long gone, and the Vikings have annexed much of Mercia's eastern territory, while the Welsh threaten from the west. Mercia's recent rulers have been accused both of hiding behind the West Saxon skirts and of using Mercia's dwindling riches to appease the Vikings. Seowulf walks a difficult path, but pride still burns in his people's hearts. Alright, yeah, they are in a bit of a predicament there, if you look at the map. Uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Having a look at the Welsh kingdoms, we have two, Gwynedd and Stratclut. For the glory of the Cymru. For the glory of the Cymru. Um, and we look at the cultural features, heroism. Wales is a land of heroes. Earn heroism by winning battles, owning Welsh land and ranking up generals to gain bonuses. Alright, that's a cool um, feature. Definitely indeed. And then 50% charge for cavalry units. And unit morale plus 5 in your own regions. Um, the people of Gwynedd have some claim to the title of True Britons, having been driven to the far west by invaders who now call themselves English. Renowned both for their bardic arts and their skill with a longbow, the Welsh of Gwynedd thrived under the leadership of Rudri Mavre. Not, not sure how to pronounce that, but hopefully I got it right. Rudri kept Gwynedd largely free of Vikings and other invaders while expanding its borders. Now he is gone and his lands are divided. Can Anarauth live up to his father's legacy? It uh, remains to be seen. And the Stratklut... Well. Oh, they're all the way up there. In uh, good old Scotland, it, um, it looks like. Or perhaps by the border. Stratklut is a kingdom of the Old North, and while much of Northern Britannia was ravaged by invaders or infighting, it has stood firm. Whether Run, Stratklut's new king, can resist the Vikings remains to be seen. His father died in mysterious circumstances, and Run has been fighting a rearguard action ever since raiders from Dufflin, Dublin, besieged his stronghold and carried off his family as hostages. However, they may have pushed him too far. Alright, a bit of a bad situation there and a initial challenge hard for him. We have uh, Gaelic Kingdoms, Sirsen. And uh, as Highland Scots then. Sirsen is a land of misty hills and open moors. Its folk, a mixture of Gaels, Picts and others driven to the edges of Britannia by invaders. So far, however, they have resisted the Viking incursions. Skoan, the capital of Sirsen, was once home to the legendary Stone of Destiny, said to bestow divine strength. Aed, Sirsen's new king, will need all the strength and divine support he can, not just against the Vikings, but to face potential threats closer to home. Alright, sounds uh, epic enough. And the Stone of Destiny, if I'm, if I'm not completely mistaken, that was actually stolen back 
to Scotland by some Scottish nationalists just a few decades ago. It was uh, kept in London uh, since the Middle Ages, I suppose. Um, but it has since been returned to England, yet again, if I'm not uh, completely mistaken. Anyway, we'll look at the East Angle, and uh, then we'll head on into the campaign itself to have a look at the game. And you have the cultural features, Great Viking Army, income plus 200% from raiding and sacking and plus 6 melee skill for all units when in enemy territory. So good for raiding, I suppose. And here King. The King of the Danes here in Britannia must play a delicate game to stay at the top. Find a balance between appeasing the English and your army. Then Guthrum's Will. The King of the Dane Law. And the Dane Law is the uh, Danish or Viking occupied territory in England. The King of the Dane Law rewards those who raid and conquer in his name. Get missions to fight and unique rewards for your aggression. And then they have a very strong axe infantry and a good balance of other infantry units. Has access to berserkers and powerful Anglian champions. Alright, that uh, sounds epic. Then you also have plus 50 in reinforcement range. And the faction information. Since killing Edmund, the last Anglian king, nearly a decade ago, the Vikings have made themselves at home in East Anglia. Now Guthrum, not content with his eastern holdings, has ambitions to become the most powerful Viking warlord in English territory. As well as making considerable inroads into Mercia and challenging the borders of Northumbria, he has raided as far as Wessex, even hitting Alfred in his capital in a surprise attack. Guthrum is a man to watch. And we can also have a look at Our foes shall fall. the Viking Sea Kings in Dublin. So they have expedition. The world is yours for the taking. Send your ships to conquer new lands. Sounds Viking-ish enough, I suppose. And tribute. Other kingdoms pay tribute as a sign of their submission. Get tribute from other factions to gain bonuses. Immune to sea sickness and high sea attrition. And one last introduction here before we head into uh, the game. The Vikings began staying on after their raids against Ireland about half a century ago. Dublin, the settlement by the Black Pool, soon became the most important of their well defended coastal bases. Or Longforts, housing the largest slave market in Britannia. Before succeeding his father to rule Dublin five years ago, Bader had already proved himself in numerous raids and skirmishes. Proof positive that those who cross the Vikings of Dublin can expect no mercy. Alright, cool. Let us uh, head into uh, the battle with um, Alfred and uh, see what the crack is. Long have the Vikings raided our lands, but nothing prepared us for their great army. For a decade we fought them, the tide of battle ebbing back and forth. Until finally they were defeated, and their great army fled our lands. Now, England lies divided. Its old political order washed away. Too long have we fought amongst ourselves. Now is the time to unite as England. England is divided, weakened from a decade of fighting. West Saxa has suffered greatly, but its star is on the rise. It is your fate to bring order back to these lands. You have vassals under your protection who are sworn to aid you in time of war. They are Gwent and Gluisig to your northwest, Defen and Kernu to your west, and Sooth, Saxa and Kent to the east. 
It is important to maintain good relations with your vassals. If you do not, they may choose to break your treaty rather than join your war. Rumors abound of new Viking incursions in the south. You will need to build up your defenses there to make sure you are not caught off guard when they strike. One of your armies is ready to attack the southern rebels. Dealing with this threat promptly will bring much needed stability to your land. All right, an epic intro and some wisdom from this uh, wise woman here. So uh, I really like the um, the art here as well. Uh, looks uh, comfy and um, and good, aesthetically pleasing. So we have gotten a mission to defeat this rebel army, and we have we will do our a no. army there to handle that threat so uh, yeah the map itself looks uh, quite a bit like uh, Attila uh, I like that because it was a good map and uh, we start with quite a bit of um, settlements here since I've mainly been playing Warhammer Total War where you basically start with one settlement in each campaign this is a bit different and uh, you have also something that we didn't have in Warhammer Total War is the food production. So uh, you have units consuming 110, but you also have some income there. You can look at the diplomacy, see the other factions. And uh, yes, it's a quite big map actually, quite detailed map with uh, a lot of uh, different factions. As you can see in the in the list here. Yeah, that's uh, quite a few. Quite a few uh, factions indeed. But uh, yeah, this is basically what the map looks like. And the starting position for Alfred's we Wessex. We will illuminate these heretics. So that we can get a good look at how um, the battle is looking so we're just gonna get straight into it all right let us start the battle here we can see the various um, characteristics so um 29 same age as yours truly command six governance two seal four and we are having the roughly the same amount of troops Ah, right, we can uh, choose the weather conditions, and I don't really want to fight in the rain, so we'll wait and see. No, still rain. Wait again. Fog. We can see if we can get some sun, maybe. Okay, dry, that's good. Your troops must be deployed before battle. Left click on units to select them, and right click on the terrain to instantly move selected units. Alright, mate, but uh, we can actually do that as we go. So, what do we have here? We have some archers, and we have some archers here too. There we have horsemen, and that means that our spearmen will have to be in close proximity uh, so they can counter the uh, horsemen there and here is Alfred and his royal companions and have a look at them yeah they look uh, they look highly aesthetic so, Oswald, royal companions, we want to get to these lads at least. Curl Axeman. Okay, what I will do is, I suppose, simply try to engage these, uh, these lads. And uh, we'll keep this in... at the flank. See if we can actually get some flanking action going on 
Oh, let's see if we can actually get a uh, charge in here. I suppose we can't really because they will counter with their um, royal companions, but um, we can threaten them just a bit. Or utilize a hit and run tactic so we can lure them in. Alright, I utilized a little edit there. Try to capture this uh, horseman and then we can send in the spearmen to illuminate them. And then we also have some Carol spearmen coming in. And uh, gonna try to engage them as well there. And we have broken their horsemen, then it's just a matter of uh, turning around and uh, chasing down this archer brass. And then we should have the battle in our hand. We can actually look at the uh, aesthetics a bit. The enemy general is dead. Alright, cool. End battle. There we go. I utilized some edits there, as you might um, have understood, and that's simply because um, I couldn't come up with insightful commentary during the entire time, and uh, again, the uh, point with taking this battle is to show a bit more about the um, game. And when you have defeated them, you can take on warriors. Kill captives. Right, we're gonna take on these warriors. To glory, we to glory. And then another really aesthetic art scene comes up there. So anyway, that was the video for today. I just thought to show off this. I just thought to show this game for you all. Um, I will not do a Let's Play series of this. I will probably do it on Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, but um, yeah, that will be at a later moment. So thank you for watching and I wish you a glorious rest of your day. XOXO, boo.